He is Denvi, a young, brown-headed spider monkey living in one of the last forests of the Ecuadorian Choco. For Denvi and his mom Vera, fruits are very important. Their diets depend on fruits, but also fruiting trees depend on Dara and Denvi because they can swallow large fruits and after digesting them they disperse their seeds over long distances. Their long arms allow them to move 6 kilometers per day, giving more opportunities for seeds to grow all over the forest. For all of this, spider monkeys are forest farmers. They are essential for the natural regeneration of their habitat. Dera and Denvi don't know that their species is on the brink of extinction, but they live the consequences of this situation on a daily basis. Their home, the Ecuadorian Choco, is one of the hotspots of biodiversity worldwide. Sadly, every day it continues being deforested very rapidly, and only 5% of the original forest remains. Some parts of these forests have been deforested to be transformed into pasture lands, and when this happened, the spider monkeys got trapped in small fragments together with hundreds of other species who continue to try and do whatever is possible to survive. In a world that does not seem to have space for them, day after day, in search of food, crossing between roads and forests, they survive deforestation and hunting. They only have their voice to be heard, and collectively, we can all help to save them. Ten years ago, the brown-headed spider monkey became our flagship species to work for the conservation of biodiversity. Hello everyone, I am Felipe Alfonso Cortez, director and co-founder of Proyecto Huashu, and we are delighted to be part of the Wildlife Conservation Network Expo for our very first time. Hi, good morning to the people who joined this live stream. I am Natalia Fuentes, president and co-founder of Proyecto Huashu. We, our team, and the communities of farmers who are our main partners are very happy to with you and share our work for, for la, la Vida, vida del, del Choco. Ten years ago, we started an amazing research about the situation of the critically endangered brown-headed spider monkey in Ecuador. This motivated us to work for its conservation. To mitigate and tackle the impacts of these threats, we have developed a comprehensive strategy that combines four programs that we will share with you today. Join us on this journey about the spider monkeys and the incredible Choco rainforest. To start, here we have the scientific research program coordinator, Esteban Rivera. Hi Esteban, how are you? Hi Felipe, Natalia, and all who are joining us here at WCN Expo. I want to start by telling you that to design primate conservation strategies, it's essential to understand the ecology, behavior, and genetic of the species. We work with the four Ecuadorian primate species, sadly, are listed as critically endangered in the country, and two of them are part of the 25 most endangered primate species in the world, the brown-headed spider monkey and the Ecuadorian white-fronted capuchin. Within this program, we manage research stations and private reserves, created with amazing partners and donors. In the province of Esmeraldas, where the best connected forest extensions of the Ecuadorian Choco are, you can find our first protected area, the Jevon Forest Reserve, where Edwin Pincay, a young local conservationist, is working at. This is an incredible place combining tropical and cloud rainforest. Here we study the wildlife of the area, while protecting iconic species like the incredible jaguar. Another part of our work is in the province of Manabi. Here the spider monkeys were believed to be extinct more than 50 years ago. However, in 2015 a population was rediscovered and we estimate that there are around 300 spider monkeys in 22 forest fragments until now. Here we study how habitat fragmentation affects the ecology and behavior of these primate species, but also how they are able to survive and move around within and between forest fragments. Now that we are here at WCN Expo, 
we want to share with you some breaking news that give us great hope and energy. Together with our wonderful partners of Fundación Condor Andino and Biopac Dula Foctan, we have initiated the creation of a protected area for the spider monkeys, starting with the purchase of 500 acres of land. This reserve represents a better future for Dera, Denby, and the rest of their group of 25 spider monkeys. Now, our dream is to turn the grasslands into forests and with the help of the spider monkeys, reforest them. We also want to increase the number of acres of these reserves to 2,500 acres and thus protect part of the spider monkeys that continue to struggle to survive in other fragments. We know together we can make it happen. Thank you, Esteban. What an amazing work. We have to continue achieving all these dreams. Now, I'm going to tell you about another major threat that the spider monkey face. As we all know, all primates, including humans, rely on their mothers and their social group because this is where we and other primates generate life experiences. Also, spider monkey mothers nurse their babies until they are three years old. These young juveniles stay with their mothers until they are six and then rely on everything they have learned to survive in the wild. But did you know that to capture a primate for the illegal pet trade, it's necessary to kill its mother first? Sadly, some infants die in the boat and others during the transport and the handling involved in the illegal trade market. Very few are rescued, which means they will spend the rest of their lives caged or chained, and less than 1% have the opportunity to return to freedom. The illegal wildlife trade is a serious crime that leaves many consequences on primates. And because of this, since 2014, we have been working on the welfare and rehabilitation of the largest captive population of brown-headed spider monkeys in Ecuador. The site where we currently develop this program, the Hacienda Jambelí, will soon become a zoo. That is why part of our main goals in this program has been to acquire a new land for the spider monkeys. This year, in collaboration with our partners Flor Sunny, Fundación Condor Andino and Wildland Zoo, we started the creation of a sanctuary for this species. Our new site has 80 acres of land with native forests where we have already built the first facility. Rehabilitation process for release into the wild are very complex. In order to provide the best rehabilitation for spider monkeys, our priority now is to build with your support, naturalized enclosures that will be designed based on the ecological, social, and behavioral needs of these species. These enclosures will have native tree species of their natural habitat, which will allow them to have greater opportunities to adapt to the wilds once they are released. With your support, this sanctuary, this dream, will allow us to give a second life chance to primates who are victims of the illegal trafficking. Thank you, Natalia, for this hard work. We know that together we can change the life of these primates. Now, I want to share with you one of our biggest learnings through these years. With our work, we have been able to be more aware of the realities that local communities face in their everyday lives. Thanks to this, we know that socioeconomic situation is one of the main factors that influence decisions about the conservation of natural resources. Due to a large number of intermediaries within the market chains of agricultural products, in this case the Cacao Nacional Fino de Aroma, farmer families are the ones who unfairly receive less income for their production, despite they are the ones who do most of the groundwork. This situation consequently has an impact on the environment, because the farmers, in order to increase their incomes, see that their only option is to cut down more forests and increase crop areas, which sadly does not improve their economic situation, because their incomes still remains unfair, and also does not allow them to improve their livelihoods. This is why, for us, biodiversity conservation has to be done with the active participation of local communities because they are the ones who can gain the most from the protection of their forest. 
Now, I'm going to introduce Sofia Trujillo, who is the coordinator of the Community Lab Development Program. Hi, Sophie. Please tell us more about this program. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to share with you the work we do together with farmers in the province of Esmeraldas since 2030. This program focuses on the implementation of a sustainable matrix model, which consists of the integration of agriculture, land for conservation of biodiversity and sustainable development. Our work builds on the local and organizational capacities of these families in their main economic activities. Through participatory methodologies, we create and promote the associativity of farmers, and with them, we develop such environmental agreements that defy commitments, responsibilities, and benefits for their association, making them our greatest allies for conservation. Thanks to the added value for the conservation of their forests and their dedication and effort to obtain a cacao product of excellent quality, we have managed to eliminate the chain of intermediaries, securing a minimum price of $4 per kilo, which compared to the international cacao price represents an increase of more than 100% incomes for the families. In summary, the impact of this program has been Two farmers' associations were created and legalized. 17 families with sustainable land management. More than 900 acres of territory under the sustainable matrix model. 560 acres of forest protect and monitored with drones. Buffer zone protection of public and private reserves. Furthermore, we combined this community work with a sustainability education program that contributes to the appropriation of new ideas and knowledge about the Ecuadorian Chocó biodiversity. As part of the training workshops, the families have learned about the diversity of mammals, birds, amphibians, and reptiles. These trainings will also help them to acquire the skills to survive the fauna of their own forest themselves and know exactly what they are protecting. Thanks to your support, we will involve more families in this program and turn them into independent and empowered communities. Thanks, Sophie. We are really happy for all of this. Now we want to make a sweet invitation. Did you know that you can eat chocolate and save the rainforest? As part of our self-management, we have created Washu Chocolate which has the commitment to support our conservation activities by reinvesting a percentage of the incomes made from the sales of the chocolates. During 10 years of work with a lot of commitment, Washu has changed the life of many people. And now, thanks to this opportunity, we can imagine what together we can achieve for the spider monkeys and for La Vida del Choco. From Ecuador, the middle of the world, a message for you. Con tu apoyo ayudaremos a muchas más mujeres. Con tu apoyo cumpliremos nuestros sueños. Junto a ti protegeremos más bosques. Con tu apoyo esperamos que más familias sean parte. Junto a ti seremos más agricultores de la conservación. Con tu apoyo voy a salvar los monos arañas.